and we're gonna restart. Alright, well, okay, yes, good question. Okay, wait, wait. While, while we're doing this, since it didn't actually properly transmit last time, let's introduce ourselves. Very well. So, okay. well, well, they all heard Jake, I assume. But yeah, if not, so Jake so. is our project lead and lead programmer, for those of you who are just tuning in mm -hmm. and didn't see us attempt this uh, 20 minutes ago. Uh, I am uh, Jonathan, uh, also Seiji Sitaki. I'm the community manager and the uh, lead designer, I guess is what we'll call that. Um, I'm in charge of doing uh, all the balance um, concepts, uh, help with some of the arts, um, help with the story, do a little bit of everything, sort of keeping everything creative um, in line with each other. And uh, our uh, Q&A speaker today, or the person who will handling your questions, is Amanda, who can introduce yep. herself as... Yeah, um, Pokemon 12, Amanda, whatever you want to call me, uh, I'll be feeding the questions to these two who are playing the game or are going to try to play the game. I do the posts on Jake's webpage, and I'm also a 3D artist for the team. Haven't done much of anything yet because we haven't really needed it being it's mostly coding thus far, but can't wait to start helping out. Jake? What am I supposed to say? Just introduce yourself. I'm the project leader, the one behind Bodies of Ascension. Um, for those who have followed us from the beginning, yes, it was called Sword Art Online in the beginning, but we decided to change the name, change the storyline, change the entire gameplay, to some degree, not only because of copyright issues that may unfold later on, but also because we wanted to have more creative freedom, and we felt like that, well, actually Jonathan, you're better at this topic than me, describing <laughs> why we actually decided to change from Sword Art Online to Blaze of Ascension. Um. Honestly, the predominant reason was copyright. Uh, obviously, as a fan game, you know, um, we are working with someone else's IP, and that in of itself is kind of risky business. Um, we did make a, a bit of an attempt to see if we could get uh, um, licensing, but obviously that's expensive. Uh, we didn't really have much to show for it, so we made the decision that uh, it would be easier for working on in the long run if we just decide to t sort of tweak it to something more um, our own. Exactly. Um, the general idea is to try to keep the spirit of the game the same without uh, stepping on any sort of uh, intellectual property issues. Indeed. I do believe we have a question though. Yeah, we, we had do. a question I like 10 minutes ago, but we have a question. Yeah, I saved a copy of that. Okay, so this is from Blaze. Just a question for VOA. Would you consider an event server? Get a max of a thousand plus p players on one server, then the server will be locked until the game is completed or everyone dies. Bosses don't respawn easy to Same concept as SAO, of course. Any thoughts? Huh. Uh, do you want to cover that? Or... <laughs> I'm still trying to understand everything of the question. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I will cover that, I guess, since it's sort of uh, a game design um, related. Uh, when we were originally working on it as a Sword Art Online game, we had considered making a, uh, a hardcore mode server, where the concept is um, it works exactly like it did in the anime where you had one life, you died, you were dead, um, and in hand with that we were going to do things like limit quest availability, limit resource availability, so spawns would thin out over time so you couldn't just sit in one area and farm it forever. Eventually it would either deplete or just stop replenishing as frequently, making um, farming in one specific area impractical encouraging people to push for the higher levels. Um, we haven't decided if we're going to stay with the concept of a hardcore mode server, although um, it's certainly something we've considered. Oh god, I hate this map. 
Well, in terms of hardcore mode server and the other one, how do you call the other one? <laughs> it was just like a normal <laughs> server and a hardcore mode server, <clears throat> so... Okay, so my idea was actually to run the entire game on hardcore mode servers, so you die and then it's over. But a lot of people... A lot of people weren't convinced of that question. Eh, yeah, convinced of that idea. Kinda like... I suck at this game. <laughs> I thought you were good at this game. I played it long ago. Oh, come on, man. Come on. It's kind of like... I don't like fighting collectors. <laughs> no one likes fighting collectors, but that's, you, not, you that's see, not an I, excuse. I just stood up and I'm already dead again. This is... This is unfair. Oh, nice. Nice. I'm dead again. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> well, this is fun. I wouldn't consider it that much fun. Alright, so there's a little post thing in the chat box. So it's like from E, e, e Z. I, yeah, it's, I can't pronounce that. It's not even a word. But So you can never know 100% for sure, for sure if a thousand players keep playing. Um, the thing is, having a thousand players connected to one server, it kind of contradicts the server idea that me and Adam, who is also on the team but not available right now, are kind of pursuing. Um, the normal setup of, a, of, a mo of an MMO setup is like, you have a master server, you have a server cluster that has several game servers on it. Jonathan, what are you doing there? I'm adjusting my audio so it's not taking up. Okay, you I, was, know. I was just checking. Anyways, continue your answering of the question. Um, yeah, I was about talking about the regular setup. So, normally you have master server, server clusters, game servers, and those are used to mainly host instances of the real game so that players can buy stuff, they can um, do housing and that kind of stuff without actually um, taking up space in the world. Kind of like, you buy a house in the same spot as somebody else, but you're never gonna see the house of the other guy because he's running on another server instance, on another layer, if you want to. And the idea that Adam and me are following right now is, we don't we have a master server, but we don't have server instances. So, if you buy a property, it's yours. Everybody will be able to see that. Nobody is be will be able to buy it unless they buy it from you for the price price that you define. And this has some advantages, but also some disadvantages, which we are trying to cover in an upcoming event. And Wow. Oh gee, it's a big one. What was I saying about servers? Yeah, so... What we already did in terms of the server idea... And I really don't like to talk about stuff that's not yet finished, but I will make an exception here... Is, um... Oh Jesus, there was one of... Oh. <laughs> At least I got a few minutes to talk about stuff right now because I don't have to consume. Oh no, don't don't survive me. Don't make me do all the work. <laughs> it is difficult to think about something like the project and then Oh. You died? You're I'm good. Okay. You know it's I got it better. <laughs> it's very difficult to think, shoot and act at the same time. Normally I would just focus on the enemies. Ooh, no, 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 you don't get me. Maybe you should have chosen a simpler game. Maybe you shouldn't have picked gold. <laughs> oh yeah, let's try chopper instead. <laughs> I don't know why you did just pick silver. Okay, silver next time, we just... Let our subs die and then we will see how it runs. Anyways, go back to answering your questions, servers. You 
wanted to do. Yep. So the approach is having a P2P network that's hosting the server. So you have a master server that's actually just acting as a lobby server. You log in, you get a server list, and you connect to a server that's near you. So the benefit of this model is, and I may explain that in a bit, is um, you have a server that may be near you, but if there is no server near you, kind of like if the um, in traditional setups you have server clusters and you connect to them and if your internet connection is bad you you lag at the game if you're near the server cluster you have a very good connection to it even if you have a low connection and that kind of stuff but with a p2p server setup it's not like um, it's nothing you would do if you were to make profit out of the game because traditional server setups require you to have an auto of System. So the servers are secured in a server farm, some stuff like that. Nobody gets access to the source. What we are doing is we are giving you the source of the server app, basically. So you can run it on your own computer. And this actually allows for you and your friends to have the best connection to you because, you know, normally, I mean, I got a lot of friends in the USA, I'm not in the USA. So the idea doesn't apply very good to this situation, but if you have a lot of, say you are living in the US, and if you have a lot of friends in the east side of the US and you are, you are in the east side, you will always have a good connection to them, because you are kind of like, Jesus. <laughs> I almost died there. I've got a person asking if you could lower the um, volume of the game a bit when you can. I'm sorry, I got a bit distracted here. What was the question? What was... Um. <laughs> Turn the volume down when you get the opportunity and... Oh god. Ah, I'm dead. Okay, let us die, then we can adjust the volume and that kind of stuff. Oh jeez. Seriously, it was the first time I played this for weeks and... It was horrible. Ah, uh, come on, man! Don't make excuses. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so why don't we finish answering the question? Um, the so you doing pe peer to peer? Yeah, let us just stay in the lobby for a bit so I can actually focus on this. So the idea is, you're playing with your friends, your local friends. One of them opens up a server, and just like a in a LAN game people connect to it without connecting to an international server. And whenever one of your friends is kind of like getting a lower connection or somebody else is getting a better connection, the server is going to switch dynamically to that player. It's not like that the game will pause and say we are relocating the server to somebody else or something like that, like you know it from Halo 4 or Mass Effect 3 when somebody leaves the party. That's not the way it is, it's dynamic, it's fast, you won't even notice it. The, that's the pro of it, kind of like. The advantage of it is, you always get a fast connection to your friends. The disadvantage is, um, this um, approach doesn't really apply to overseas connections, so when you're playing with your friends in uh, Europe, Asia, or wherever, uh, you will always get the normal connection like you would with an international server. Um, also, it means that we cannot provide um, secure transactions and that's why we won't say it's um, it's a free-to-play game where you can actually purchase something to um, buy stuff, buy gold or whatever. That's not gonna happen. It will be like you earn the money in the game but you cannot buy something outside in, in, a, in a separate shop or something like that. Because that simply doesn't work the way we want to do it. And I'm not yet sure if I really want to make it a profit-driven game, because I hate free-to-play models where they apply this pay-to-win approach, I think. So that's what I wanted to say about the server stuff. Is there anything else I should talk about right now? 
Um, someone posted like a uh, jacket JTA. So we basically act as mini servers. TV, TBH. I like that idea. It would certainly help out with ping issues. Mini servers. That's the term I was looking for. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's it. I really was looking for that. So yeah, everyone actually is acting as a server and as a client as at the same time, and the servers. The idea is that the servers interchange the information between each other from time to time. So, yeah, basically what what I always said is, you and your friends, you will always be on the same layer, so you will be visible to each other. But if players uh, with a low connection try to join your server, and they have, you know, they are kind of lagging, they will be relocated to another server that's near their location where they have a better connection, so that we don't have the lagging experience at all. That's what we're trying to get rid of with, that, with this idea. So, yeah. Is there another question or is there something else I was supposed to talk about? Uh, turn the volume down in the game a bit. In the game, volume down. Yeah. Sound. Options. And, uh, you should. I think you want to adjust. I don't, I don't think the music's too loud. I think it's the sound effects. So just turning down the effects volume should be good. I just turned down everything. Ah, oh, that works. So, yeah. You want to try that again, not on gold? You want to have another game? Oh, Jesus. Well, we don't have to, but I don't know if they really want to stare at your uh, your lovely Turian for, you know, the next 30 f minutes or so. Not that he's not pretty, but, you know. Oh, Jonathan, just shut up. <laughs> <laughs> How rude, sir. How rude. I apologize. Uh, let's play something ridiculous. Any other questions? Or, does anyone ever actually have any other questions, or is just 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 going to be like a play video, and nothing to talk about? Well, I mean, we could certainly start talking about things, but I would love to just you know answer any questions that people have first. Well, in case we don't have any questions, I would um, suggest that you actually start talking about hey. something. Is that a there's no more questions? There are no more questions, Amanda just left us alone. <laughs> eh. Used to it, I guess. Oh. Um. Well, why don't you. Hmm. Why don't I? Why don't I? Alright, question. Oculus first person versus third person. Disadvantage much. Oh, this has been a long ongoing discussion. Um. Yes. So far. I've already decided that we will support the Oculus Rift. So far, I um, I mean, somebody may try to convince me, but I think that Oculus Rift should only work with first person. There are other people who say we should at least try it in third person mode, and there are other people who say you can't have an MMO without third person. Being a just first person sh wouldn't work out or something like that. I disagree on that. Your friend joined us. <laughs> Yay! We got company. Thank you. <laughs> oh, I thought we weren't inviting other people. What happened to that role? I didn't invite anyone. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, loophole. I see. Exactly. Where are the enemies? I don't see anyone. Well, your friend and I are killing them, so you're not. Oh, thank you. So I can actually concentrate on talking. Again. Okay, um, are we ready for like the next question or I, I wasn't yet finished with the third person first okay. person third person. Okay. So as you may have read on the forum Oh and by the way the forum is currently off and I'm working on this. Even when I'm playing this game I'm You're not working on it. You have someone else working on it. Yeah but that implies <laughs> that I'm working on it too, doesn't it? No it doesn't. Don't lie. Okay so Don't lie. Somebody is working on it, and it is not me, but this guy is gonna fix it. Better? Yes. Okay. So what about this Oculus thing? Um, the thing was, 
first person and third person will be supported and you can switch between that whenever you want to. This does not apply to Oculus Rift. Oculus Rift will only be first person. No third person. I mean I will give it a try in uh, development but I'm not... I just don't see a reason why you would actually try to apply that to uh, a virtual reality game gaming device like the Oculus Rift. But who knows. Personally, I think it would feel a little out of place. It would sort of make you feel a little um, disembodied, and I think that would be weird. At least if you're going for like the uh, immersion aspect of uh, of the of the Oculus. That's what we are going for. So, next question. All right. Have you decided on whether the world is going to be islands yeah. or something else? Um, Islands was an idea that Cedric, um, our art design lead, brought up. And, um, basically I like the idea of, of the floor system as it was applied in SAO. So you have a hundred floors and you beat the end bosses on those floors, you unlock the next floor, you go to the next floor, you kill everything on that floor that's um, trying to kill you. And yeah, the thing is, this approach does not really... Well, I don't see a reason why we shouldn't include islands. Jonathan, you're down. I got shot while I was trying to kill a husk. <laughs> okay. So there will be islands, but it's not going to be the primary theme of, of the game, so it won't be that you travel from island to island. It will still have the floor system, but in addition we will have islands. Well, I mean, the floor system definitely doesn't uh, exclude islands. I mean, if you watch uh, the SAO anime, uh, one of the floors is predominantly ocean, so... Okay, so next question? Yep. Okay. Regarding the server thing, so basically on PvP servers we've made up of players with the same thing. Um... What we are trying to do is... That you will play with those players that have a low ping. So a very good connection to you. It doesn't really mean that you all have the same ping because sometimes you know ping is dynamic it changes from every second and that's one of the reasons why the system actually checks only every 30 seconds what your ping rate is right now to the server and then will decide whether you should reconnect to another server or whether or not in terms of p2p this means when you when you engage in battle with another player um this rule won't apply, so you will always be connected to him regardless of what his ping rate is, uh, given that you actually accepted his um, better invitation from your own will. Oh Jesus. As long as the battle goes on, you won't be able to change the server. But after the battle is over, it may happen. Again, if you're playing with friends or with players that you're used to play with, the system won't change that. So it, the idea only applies to to um to random people that actually join your server. So it's not really applied to everything. All right. To Jake, test third person with Oculus, because there'd be player disadvantage. Having third person is a massive disadvantage. So if there's going to be a hard hardcore server, balance it out so everyone would have one view. Um, the volume was a bit off. I did not clearly understand the question, but I'm guessing that you said that uh, having Oculus Rift support on a hardcore server would, uh, would it Basically be possible. Basically what they're asking is having third person, like. Like view is a huge disadvantage, like a huge advantage over people with Oculus Rift. They don't have like first uh, okay. person. First person. Yeah, that. So I, I, on the hardcore server. I totally understand that. Um. Okay. Whoop. 
okay. Uh, thing is, I actually haven't yet thought about that, but I can completely see where you're coming from, and it won't be it won't be possible for some. Actually, I'm just thinking about having a separate server for Oculus Rift people. Oh Jesus! So when you're having an Oculus Rift, and you would play it against another another player who is not having the Oculus Rift and can play in third person mode, that would be a huge disadvantage, I I believe. And it wouldn't it would simply be unfair. So we won't we won't let that happen unless. Unless we come uh, up I think the answer to that question is we are looking into it, but we don't know for certain. <laughs> <laughs> very good, thank you. That's a very politically correct statement there. <laughs> yes, we are looking uh, into that and we will see. It, what I, I do understand on. where you're coming from uh, design wise, where uh, third person does give you a, a lot of um, I just situational saw awareness advantage that you don't get when you're locked in the first person. Um, but then again, if in an ideal world, that would never be a problem. But obviously, uh, we're never really in an ideal world. Um, we'll try to figure something out that keeps that from becoming a huge uh, advantage or disadvantage. Yeah, that's the best way we can put it. Because I just said that having a se uh, it may be a possibility to have a separate server for Oculus Rift. But then again, Oculus Rift right now is not that cheap. I mean, it is cheap compared to other VR devices, but I don't expect a lot of people to have it around, so playing an MMO with only five other Arcus Rift people might feel a bit lonely. That's the enemy. Another uh, no more questions? We it seems to be not so. Like I can't. Yeah, Zambi Cat Six told us to ignore his because it was answered. So. I knew this was gonna happen. Lost place. What? <laughs> Have you decided on what the first skills will be in the game? Have I decided? Have we decided? Have we decided? On um, I'm sorry, I didn't caught part of that. What skills? Like the basic skills, the first skills. Like what will be the first skills available to you? Um. We actually don't have all of the skills determined. Uh, there's a there's a bit of a design discussion going on about um, whether just or not a tiny we bit, want just to a tiny bit of discussion. <laughs> entirely faithful to the uh, original skill system, in that all skills are slotted versus having some of them um, be passive effects in a sense. Uh, so until we've Entirely figured out how we don't do that. Um, there are certain uh, skills that we are kind of um, putting off to the side while we figure that out. Um, we do know for a fact that we are going to have individual weapon skills. Um, actually, this is a great time for that chart that I linked to earlier. Um, we do have a weapon skills uh, concept. Uh, it's it doesn't great. All of it's the a great weapons. time for the chart, but right now I'm playing Mass Effect in Wave Nine. That's and it's fine. We can we can link to the chart and we can take a look at it and go over it again. Um, I mean, the wave's almost over, so like you know, I'll talk for a minute or two and then we can go into detail over the chart. Okay. Um, but you know, so right now the internal discussion is whether or not we want to stay faithful 100% to the original skill system or if we want to make some um, modern convention improvements. Uh, obviously, <laughs> SAO was designed as sort of a, uh, a very Japanese grindy MMO with a lot of um, time investment. Um, it works, but it leaves a little bit uh, to be desired in terms of uh, good gameplay flow. 
so we know for a fact that we're going to keep weapon skills the same. Where the idea is that uh, you know you have to train through weapon skills to get the uh, actual um, sword skills, um, which I don't think we've determined what we're actually going to call those yet. Uh, but the idea is that you have to skill up the skill, gives you access to the uh, sword skills, and um, those are used in conjunction with the rest of the combat system to try to create a dynamic flowing combat. Um, we do know that we're also going to have crafting skills. Um, the thing that I'm actually working on right now is trying to figure out a way to make crafting skills combat capable, in a sense. Um, obviously, if you're an armor smith, you're going to have a skill specifically for making armor, and that'll be your armor smith skill. And as Real. you raise your armor smith skill, um, that'll allow you to make higher level equipment. Um, but one of the things I want to do is make it so that if you're an armor smith, um, it's still practical for you to join your friends who are similarly leveled but in a combat profession and still have you able to put up a fight so that you're not just sitting in town all day if you don't want to be. Um, so that kind of falls into the realm of whether or not we want to have some um, skills that sort of bleed over. So in the instance of an armor smith, maybe um, your one-handed mace skills uh, that you normally use for fighting with also determines what kind of smithing hammer that you can use. So that if you want to, you know, level up smithing, you get ranks in your one-handed hammer, and you can take that and actually go to combat with it. Whereas you still have to focus on actual smithing to be able to smith higher level items. Um, this is taking a little longer than I thought, and I don't know if I have four minutes of of skill talk to talk about, so... Uh... <laughs> Alright, so non-combat skills have combat bonuses? The idea is more that your combat skills may have non-combat applications. So, if... like in the, Again, in the example of the armorsmith, so to be a smith you obviously need to use a hammer um, to, you know, smith your metals. Um, the idea is to have some of that bleed over as weapon skill, so you would gain ranks in hammer slower than if you were actively in combat, but since you have to do more smithing, it sort of catches up, in a sense. So let's say you have a, a max level armor smith, you might have almost a max level one-handed hammer. So if you're sitting there crafting often, you can still go out and do some of the content with your friends without having to have to grind out combat um, completely. Like, you don't have to put in... Well, let, let's say, for example, it takes you... Uh, uh, this is an arbitrary number. We don't actually have uh, experience curves or anything figured out yet. But let's say it takes you, you know, 30 hours to get to uh, Hammer 500, for example. Uh, if you're doing smithing, obviously, you're not going to put in that same amount of time as your other friends. So you can't necessarily do the same content that they can. Well, in my, the, the thought that I have right now is, let's say since you're using the hammer natively for smithing, let's say you get, you know, hammer experience at like 60%. So you do have to do some combat to catch up to your friends in leveling, but you, since you natively get experience for using your hammer, you don't have to grind as much to catch up to them. So it's, it's practical to be a combat crafter, in a sense. Alright, so have you thought about endgame material? Oh, uh, we have not even looked at endgame. <laughs> so uh, so that, that's a question that um, we don't, we've Why never really... Why is Jake not talking? Uh, he's trying not to die, I think, which is what I really shouldn't be doing, <laughs> except for I am stuck behind two brutes. Five seconds. I'm not gonna make it. I am stuck behind two brutes. I wasn't right, so talking I because... question on the skills then. So okay. the skills would link with each other. Skills. So wood, cook, wood cutting would increase axe levels? Um, I... Yes, hold on. Let, let me uh, tab out and I can go over that chart with everybody. Maybe I should tab out too. 
You should, and then you can show them the chart. Exactly. So yes. So so for example, let's say um, well, one, actually one of the things we haven't decided is whether or not we're going to have um, flat gathering. Um, obviously, it's it's conventional in uh, standard uh, MMOs to have a gathering class, um, but something is making a strange noise. There's a beeping. I have a dehumidifier. It's full. It'll beep for a couple seconds. It'll stop. <laughs> there we go. It stopped. Um, so we haven't decided if we're going to do conventional gathering, but um, we probably are. I can't. I'm not going to give you a guaranteed answer on that. We may come up with something a little more uh, interesting, but um, there's going to be gathering of some form. It'll either be through combat or some sort of mechanic. Um, but if we do like a conventional wood cutting, wood cutting would use axes. So obviously if you're using axes, it would natively increase your axe skill. Um, as for end game materials, that's way above. As for how the story is coming along, um, I can't comment on that. I'm actually not working on the story currently. I can comment on that. Story writer and Jake has been working with them and they've been sort of back and forth off of a base storyline that I came up with before we picked them up. So, Jake? Yeah, I will take over from here. Um, in regards of the end game discussion, uh, we haven't yet really decided anything in, in terms of that. We have mainly just tried to focus on the beginning of our own game because right now we kind of wanted to make a clear cut between um, Sword Art Online and Blaze of Ascension. So, I'm not going to reveal much from the storyline that um, Jedida came up with. Jedida is our story writer, and um, she actually spent a fairly. Uh, she actually wrote several pages, I think 17 pages, about possible story ideas, how they influence the game, what the kind of backstory about it is, and that kind of stuff. And I'm pretty sure she will be able to talk to you directly um, if we if we're going to establish the stream thing as a regular thing. So, um, in terms of the of the story, we will still stick um, with the fact that there is literally no magic in, in the world of Blaze of Ascension. So, we will have an explanation for that, why there is no magic anymore, but um, we, will st we will stick to it being no magic, um, no ranged weapons and that kind of stuff, like it was in SAO. But again, the story will be different, and um, I'm hesitating to tell you much about the story right now. Not because it's not yet written, but because I know that Jedida loves to talk about the story, and I don't want to take anything away from her. So we will cover that in an upcoming stream thing. They are reach weapons, they're not technically range weapons. Um, well, you know, I was referring to anything like a bow, something like that. I, I was referring to the comment on the stream about, um, someone said there's range weapons. Actually, in SAO, there are thrown weapons, but they're not a main combat weapon. They're sort of a utility weapon. Um, they're mostly used for, um, just tagging and... Uh, in a very kind of overpowered sort of way. Apparently they can deliver instant paralytic poison, which uh, we're not going to do because that's a little ridiculous, in my opinion. <laughs> but uh, we are not doing any ranged range weapons. So, like, you're not seeing bows, you're not going to see guns, um, you're not going to see any of that stuff. The closest thing that we have... Uh, in theory, so far is uh, if we bring up the chart again, there is a uh, yeah. the chain plates. Um, the idea there um, is it's more of a reach weapon. It is it is sort of. Can, uh, yeah, hold on, let me let me just add the link to the chart so you can look at the chart uh, yourself <laughs> as you'd like, because uh, it is it is a bit wide, so you know you're not going to see all of the details there. Um, but the idea is that each each category of um, weapon has a uh, a delay speed, which is what we're using sort of as attack speed. So the lower the delay, the faster your attack. Um, a damage, a reach range, and then some of them have unique properties. Uh, there's a chart 
for that. Uh, keep in mind, this is an older version. The chart's about a month old. Uh, we're not sure how many of these we're going to keep, and we're not sure about the progressions yet, but this was sort of the... Um, this is the working draft of weapons. All right. I actually have uh, to get going now, and since you're not playing the game anymore, I think you guys fine. can handle it. So. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. Oh. Uh, okay. Thanks for helping us out. Um, view on crystals. We, I don't know if they're going to stay crystals, but we are going to use the similar concept of having um, some sort of consumable that you can use for various effects. I like the idea of having crystals. Uh, well, we don't. They don't necessarily have to be crystals, but they will be consumables. Crystals is what I'm saying. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I guess I guess they're staying crystals. Okay. <laughs> Uh, oh, right about then. the menus, uh, the person who is working on our UI has not made any progress on the UI. Uh, he got held up. There was some uh, personal things, I guess. Um, so that's not ready to showcase anything quite yet. Um, but we are trying to overhaul the entire UI and not just the menu system. Which is a long, ongoing process. Everything's a long, ongoing process. This is game development. It's never easy. It's never fast. Exactly. <laughs> By the way, there was something I meant to talk about, and um, I don't know if I'm going to bore you guys to death with it, but I'm s I am will keep going because I am getting emails from the community, from random people who kind of like discover our project, and the first thing they ask us, or they ask me is, why are we using the Unity engine for it? Why are we not using the Cry engine or the Unreal engine? Both of license terms or, you know, because they are proven to be good at MMOs and that kind of stuff. And the graphics, the graphics, you know, you could create a, g you could create a game like Crisis. Crisis 3, possibly. So the thing is, and I'm really getting tired of writing in elaborate answer on that is um, when you decide to create an MMO, a massive multiplayer experience, you're not going for fancy graphics. That's something you can do in a single player game, like Uncharted or The Last of Us, where you have really fancy graphics and corridors to go through. But the thing is, an MMO with lots of people running around, each of them having his own custom set, his own equipment and that kind of stuff, you cannot really show off fancy graphics. And you have to consider that a lot of people don't have the game or rig that you are playing with. So they don't have an NVIDIA Titan graphics card or whatever. They are playing with lower end CPUs and GPUs. And that's why we are using Unity, because it is very, very good at resource handling, running on low resources running on multiple tech platforms, and it's the one that I know how to develop a game with. I mean, it's certainly possible to develop a game with um, CryEngine and Unreal Engine, but it would take a lot of time to actually get into it, learn the APIs, and um, you know, you would need a lot of more, a lot of more pro programmers to actually get something on engine and Unreal Engine running the way you want it to. And that's just something you, you can do in Unity Engine. And that's the primary reason why I decided to use Unity. That's just something I want to mention because I'm still getting emails about that. Fancy graphics and the Unity Engine. Alright. Um, since I did link the, uh, skill chart. Uh, I don't know if anyone has any questions about that, but that is, uh, I thought, pretty self-explanatory. Um, so if you need to ask anything about that right now, uh, feel free. Otherwise, I guess we have to switch to a different topic. Different topic. Um, Do we have anything left to talk about? Someone asked if there's anything that has changed on the demo since it was released that we can show them. Ah. Oi, oi, oi. 
Well, technically yep. no, which is why we're not playing the game right now. That that's a good that's a good reason right there. Um, no, Jonathan. The reason is slightly different. <laughs> the reason uh, is since we um. I don't know what was the f what is the version you got on your computer because I don't know what the version was we distributed last time. Uh, are you talking about the internal dev version? No, or no, the... I I'm talking about what we distributed publicly. That was the that was just the um, the frame rate test, I believe. I believe the frame rate test was the last public release version. So that was just the walkthrough of Town of Beginnings. Okay, so that must have been 1.0.4. That was before we switched over, and that was when we were still taking signups. <laughs> the one where you're on tracks. Thanks, Ansoni. Okay, now I know what we are talking about. Um, yeah. Since then, we have implemented a custom occlusion cutting system, which has, at least on my laptop, the frame rate went from 30 frames per second up to 60 frames per second, which is a good sign. But I cannot promise that this will have the same impact on every device. It's just an ordinary old laptop that I was using to test that. Also, we implemented a pathfinding system so that NPCs don't walk through walls and anywhere where they want. And, um... still have it on my PC. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> You don't, don't. It's not a good version. <laughs> no, we actually tried to do everything to, to deactivate it in, in a possible way we could because we... Yeah, but it's on the internet. Once it's on the internet, it never goes away. <laughs> exactly. Oh, Jesus. Um, thing is, we have done a lot since 1.0.4. We are actually, right now, we are on up to 1.0.8. And this means for me that... Um, we are going to... I renamed it Trickmania. So if, you, if you keep going like that, then I'm completely losing track. Trickmania. Don't, don't, read, don't read the chat. Yeah, so oh. what I was saying is... Um, I don't know if any one of you is interested in this, but we are going to open up alpha applications again in a few weeks. Um, actually, not in a few weeks. If, it, if everything would turn out the way I would like it, that would start about in a week. But I know that nothing turns out the way I would like it, so I'm saying within the next weeks, because that gives us time to actually reconsider what I'm just saying here. <laughs> you should never make promises on the internet. Exactly, never make promises. Because that's, that's why I said, give us time to consider things. But yeah. We will give you access soon enough, and that's why we are not showing things off. Because visually, nothing has changed since the old version we distributed. But code-wise, 99% have changed. And you will notice that in terms of performance boost, new features, that kind of stuff. What we are not going to give you access to, even when we give you access to the alpha, is um, network access. So, you will be able to run around and check out some of the gameplay features, but you will not be able to connect with your friends, because that's something that Adam and me are still working on on a daily basis, and the code is just changing so often, and sometimes it's working brilliantly, and then on another setup it's not working, so... That's all I have to say about that matter. <sighs> Anything else I wanted to talk about? No, I don't think so. Anything else you wanted me to talk about? Will there be Oculus Rift support in Alpha if you still have the four months left? Um. I'm guessing that's a no, by the long um and pause. No, it's, 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 uh, it's me taking a look at my drink and just seeing that my drink <laughs> is, uh, I need another drink. That's you should, you, you should probably contact what you're drinking because <laughs> oh jeez that may come off wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. So don't get drunk on the stream. No, I'm not getting drunk on the stream. I'm just drinking plain water. So 
Um, will there be Orca Swift support in Alpha if you still have the four months left? Yes, there will be Orca Swift uh, support. As long as we have access to the Unity Pro license. And, um, yeah, that's mainly it. To know now. Oh, okay, lol. Okay. Keep in mind, there is like a 5-10 second delay from when we say something and the uh, stream goes through. Ah, okay, I was wondering. Yes, they're commenting on your drinking. I mean, your, your water drinking. Jonathan, stop <laughs> it. <laughs> Please. I'm, I'm, am I making you look bad on the stream? Oh, I'm sorry. I don't care about that. I'm having a great time here. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, Oculus Rift price is a little high, but uh, eh, there are there are a fair amount of people out there who actually have one, which is kind of surprising to be honest. But um, you never know. Well, it's it's more of a game changer than the actual next console console kit generation that's just popping out. PlayStation Four, Xbox One. If you take a look at that, spending three hundred there or investing three hundred in the Oculus, which kind of Gives more. You know, well, I, I will say this about the next gen consoles. Their switch to uh, PC hardware makes uh, inter, you know, uh, development nicer since it's not that much different developing for the PlayStation as it is for the Xbox as it is for the PC. So that's nice. I'm, I'm sure they'll mess it up somehow anyway, but they don't <laughs> have to now. Yes, I tend to agree there. And yes, the Oculus Swift is going to get cheaper. Cheaper than 300 bucks. I think they wanted to bundle it with the next generation video gra uh, gaming graphics cards from NVIDIA, if I'm not mistaken. But yeah. Although it's funny that we mentioned that the consoles are getting smarter about the development environment and Steam is releasing their Steam Box, which has its own operating system. <sighs> One hey. step forward, two steps back. One step forward, two steps back. Why? Why do you say so? Steam is the releasing their Steam Box, and it's their own custom Linux environment. And <laughs> and they expect developers to develop games specifically for their version of their Linux environment. To I don't think so. They are. They're not, it's not all streaming. Some of it is expected to be native play, which is why a lot of Steam games, which is why a lot of the Valve games are Linux compatible. Hmm. They want to push for Linux. Oh yeah, of course. We will support the EU, yeah. Uh, Just uh, because I read the name in the, in the comments. so that that's That would be a neat trick. Would it? I don't, yeah, I don't think since so. Since a lot of uh, the Uya development is not so good right now, there's a there's a little bit of a a, a slack going on. I uh, seriously, I had a look at the hardware specs and what you can do with programming wise with it, and you're fairly limited in what you can do on the Uya. Quite a bit, but their idea is to do newer hardware every year, so that's why. Yeah, but who's gonna buy that? Nobody. <laughs> Yeah, but that's their idea. I mean, the first I can understand the first one because it was kind of like the open source console. But Uya two, Uya three, Uya four. Who's gonna buy that? Because now they know what it is. Nobody, it's, because the the real thing is that the market's not so great. It 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 is a smartphone without a phone. You know, it's it's an Android. <laughs> We're off topic a little bit. Yeah, we are kind of like off topic. We will not be developing for Android devices. Uh, in the foreseeable future, unless they get um, significantly better, the closest thing you're going to see us developing that might be playable is the Shield, because that's just streaming to a little handheld. And Sony, we will make it a proper death game on the hardcore server, but if someone dies in game, you cannot walk into their house with a gun because there are no guns. Technically. <laughs> And I'm still not sure if you can just walk into the house and just, you know. I don't think that I, that would be kind of unfair. I would consider 
housing would be a safe area in the sense that you can't just break into the house. I don't think that I'm considering anything right now in, in terms of safe housing. Well, I mean, housing safe in the sense that you can't just break into someone's house. Hmm. But what, like, happens, what happens if a person dies? And we just say your character is gone, well, your equipment is gone. If we're playing a hardcore server, then them dying would just free up their, their property. That's simple. Hmm. Their inventory goes away unless they're married, then the person they're married to gets their inventory. That's how that works in SAO. Well, that sounds convenient. <laughs> we will think about that. It doesn't always have to be difficult. Sometimes it can be easy. Sometimes it's a simple solution. Yeah. Tend to agree with you. Uh, like instances, the housing that is. I've said that before. I'm not a. I'm not a friend of instancing thing. Um. Well, Final Fantasy fourteen is bringing housing in, and what they're doing is their instances. But they're shared instances, so what happens is if you go to the housing zone, let's say there's an instance, and the instance has, um, let's say, 50 small lots, 20 uh, medium lots, and 10 large lots. Um, when you zone in, you only go to that first instance, and you can only buy from that one. And only when that lot, all of those lots are bought out, do they create another version of that instance where there's free housing. So it's like semi-instancing. Mm hmm. Oh, I see, I see. We will take a look at this. I'm still not convinced. <laughs> I mean, you could also do the, uh, what is it, Lord of the Rings, where the housing is literally built into the maps, so there are only a finite number of houses to a certain extent. I think there is a little bit of instancing, but they're built on physical locations. Um, several people in the chat are talking about combat. Did we cover combat already, or didn't we talk about it? We don't have a much... We... Hmm. We have an old draft document, and that is really outdated. Um, I don't know if you want us to even consider that, because I have not revised that yet. Well, I can tell people what my vision for the combat system is like. <laughs> Is that that drastically different than what we have so f we have on the draft document? I don't know. My vision was it to be real time, not well, turn that was, based. Well, that's we've al we've always been planning around that. Yeah. <laughs> it was Wait, is that your only vision? Because that's a very vague vision. <laughs> <laughs> I could elaborate on this, but I'm not going to do that. Saving computation resources is always a good thing, so definitely take a look at all your opportunities, please. Um, yeah, we will definitely try to make it as efficient as possible. So, yeah. Anything else we need Did to do? Do we want to go over the, the draft for the combat system? Or at least some of the ideas we had? Or do we just want to wait on that until we have something more solid? I would suggest to wait with that a bit until we have something more solid because it's always better to give people something solid than something vague. Well, I guess I can elaborate a little bit so some of it did make it into the skill chart some of that we still are using. Um, the base combat system that we are definitely going to use, it's going to be, uh, you know, standard WSD, left, right, mouse, click. Um, the idea is that um, you can chain together attack sequences and they'll be input based. So um, it's content sensitive. So if you're jumping and attacking, or you're crouching and attacking, or you're strafing and attacking, there'll be different type of maneuvers. Um, <laughs> uh, the, the the primary trait uh, for every weapons is that. Um, every weapon pretty much has a reach, a damage, and a delay. So that's going to be our primary uh, balancing point. So fast weapons are obviously not going to do as much damage. And let's say a fast damage, a uh, fast attacking weapon happens to have slightly higher damage. It might 
lose reach as a as a result of that. So if you look at this skill chart, um, you know the basic daggers are very fast. They don't do a lot of damage and they have short reach. Um, but then you get things like uh, chain blades, which have a very fast attack speed, but they have really long range. But as a trade-off, they have the lowest possible damage in the game. Um, and the idea is that as you attack people, it has a. I haven't. We. I don't think we ever decide if we're going to do a guaranteed or a percentage. But the idea is that as you attack somebody, it increases the delay between their attacks. So if you're constantly attacking somebody, it prevents them from attacking often. Um, I believe the intent is to make that effect slightly less pronounced against players, but more efficient against enemies, so that you can slow down boss attacks by having multiple people attack the boss. There is going to be a, a, a cap on how much you can delay the attack, but the idea is that attacking is a viable defense against bosses, in a sense. I'm tempted to click that link, but if I do, uh, everybody it's... will see what's there. So. <laughs> yeah. In Mass Effect, there are weapons that do more damage if you have a higher frame rate than other players. Can you avoid that in BAO? Um, uh, I think he's talking about um, just how fast weapons can fire as a frame rate issue. So obviously if your frame rate slower than the way those mechanics... Like, um, I, I don't... I think that's mostly a syncing issue rather than necessarily a frame rate. All oh, right. If you put it that way, then I can answer this clearly. Um, as soon as you press the key to take uh, to um, to actually yeah take an action, it's gonna be synced instantly without the engine waiting for the frame to render on your screen. So when you press attack and you have a lag, um, you have a lag on your GPU. So the um, the game is kind of starting to start on your end the action will still be synced to all the other players you are connected with and it will be executed simultaneously. So there won't be any kind of lagging in action um, execution. Parrying um, like knockdown attacks done. Do you want to say something about that? As for parrying, there is going to be a parrying and a blocking system. Um, we don't have this finalized, uh, but the idea is that all defensive actions have a cap on how much damage they can negate, as well as a chance to take a blowback. So um, the idea is if you hit somebody hard enough, you can theoretically shatter through their guard. Um, so, like, let's say you're fighting a big boss, and obviously if the boss is gigantic and they're hitting you, um, parrying isn't going to really um, save you if they're using, like, a special attack. But it might be sufficient to stop, uh, you know, the, the boss just normal swinging and taking swings at you. Um, we have to fine-tune this concept a little bit, but the, the, the draft idea is that um, parrying has the least recovery time, so you can just you know, parry without a problem, but it doesn't block a lot of force, and it doesn't have a lot of counterforce. Um, the concept of counterforce is that if you're especially strong versus another person, parrying can temporarily induce a hit stun delay. Um, so parrying has a low counterforce. Uh, it recovers quickly, though, and it's good for, you know, obviously if you have two weapons, a light weapon, or if you're not using a shield. So you, uh, so that's for just like generic everybody. So like, uh, if you're using a rapier, your parry might not be as strong as somebody that's necessarily using, say, a two-handed axe or a two-handed sword. Um, <laughs> multiple people uh, uh, parrying, that, that's a detection programming issue. I, I, I haven't even considered it, just because I feel like that would put a lot of stress in detection. Um, as for blocking, the idea for blocking is that blocking, um, it's more efficient, so you don't take as much damage bleed through. Um, it, 
doesn't stagger you, it, and it has a lot of counter force. Um, so the idea is if you want to play a defensive style, then shields are um, absolutely the way you want to go. It's going to let you soak a lot more damage. It's going to be a lot more efficient. But you're going to trade off on that for just how fast you can attack, um, what kind of weapons you can use. So generally speaking, if you're a shield player, you're just not going to attack as well, but you're going to be that guy who's going to be in the front lines, and you're going to be soaking boss hits. Um, as for whether or not we will have multiple detections, so like let's say there's a line of people blocking an attack and making that more efficient, uh, that is entirely a programming thing, and I don't know if Jake really wants to deal with that. <laughs> well, to be honest, I haven't yet considered anything in that regard yet, but um, as soon as Adam and me finish the um, network synchronization code, we will have a look in uh, at this. We will start up. Um, we will start building up the AI for the NPCs. We will decide what the attack range is kind of like, and then we will start on the player features: how you attack, how you block, how you parry, and that kind of stuff. And we will we will see what solutions we can come up with. So. Right now, I cannot give you any details about that. Sorry. Um, that. So yes. Uh, if you're not using a shield, it will affect your play style a bit. But that will also be dependent on your weapon. Uh, so the idea is that the slower weapons will have a little bit more, um, a little more strength behind their parry versus a fast weapon. So obviously, if you're using a dagger, you're really not gonna, you're not gonna parry as well as somebody using a two-handed sword. And uh, someone using a spear, for example, is gonna have a hard time parrying in general, just because it's it's not really a parrying weapon, obviously. Um, so what? weapon you pick is going to affect your defensive options, you will always have some sort of defensive option. We are definitely having uh, blocking, we're definitely looking into parrying, and we're going to have an evasion system where you can tumble and roll and dash. Um, so the idea is that the fast attack weapons generally are going to prefer tumbling and dashing as, a, as, a, as an avoidance option, with parrying sort of being their uh, last option. Um, the mid-range weapons are going to be comfortable with parrying. <laughs> um, they're going to be able to dash, and some of them are potentially going to be compatible with shields, so they'll be blocking. So your your medium speed weapons are sort of your um, wide range options, and then your super slow weapons are generally going to be unable to use a shield um, because of their weight. They may limit your dashing. Uh, don't hold me to that because that's still in in draft. But the idea is they're going to be your parry heavy weapons. So two handed weapons are going to be parry friendly, not block, and potentially less uh, maneuverability. And then any weapon combination with a shield, the shield's going to weigh you down potentially because uh, you're if you're going to go the shield route. You're going to get extra benefit for having heavy armor, and heavy armor for sure is definitely going to make you less mobile, so you're more of a, a defensive fighter. By the way, the more you talk about those features and all that, the more you remind, you remind me of the workload that's hiding up in front of me in terms of coding. <laughs> It was in the system document. That's yes. like that was like before we switched over the Blades of Ascension. You looked at that. You you were okay with that. Yeah, I, and I'm still I'm still okay with that. But you know, the more you talk about it, it's kind of like dashing system, evasion system, attack system, parry system, block <laughs> system. It's kind of like building up. Uh yes. Um, stamina. Um, there is going to be stamina. The specifics are definitely in really rough draft um, because I've made about four or five revisions to that over the revisions that are in the draft document. Um, in the draft document and the vision that we're looking at currently, uh, stamina is a flat value. 
So the idea is everybody has the same amount of stamina and that doesn't change. What changes is how much stamina is consumed. So the idea is that if you're in heavy, heavier armor, actions will consume more stamina and you can offset that by either taking off armor or leveling a skill, like an acrobatic skill or, or a stamina skill or something, which will reduce that penalty. So the idea is that characters who are in light armor are far more maneuverable um, to make up for the fact that they don't have a lot of defenses. But people who are in heavy armor can't move around as much, but they'll actually be able to flat out negate certain percentages of damage. The problem with that system and why it's in uh, heavy revision is because it's a really difficult balance to make. So you don't want to make it too appealing to be in heavy armor, but you also don't want it to be too appealing to be in no armor. So we have to try to get a fine balance of making those feel s different, but similar benefits. Combo passive skills, like having height, weight limit increase, and dual wielding to dual wield two-handed weapons. No, uh, you will that. never be able to dual wield two-handed weapons. Uh, Why not? I like that idea. No, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. That, that... Well, first of all, that creates a lot of that creates a lot of programming problems for you. That yeah. creates a lot of animation problems for people, yeah. and that creates a game balance problem for me. Yeah, but so. I, I certainly like the idea. <laughs> <laughs> it's a smart one. I will be running running around in a swimsuit. You could. I mean, you see people. <sighs> Okay, so the origin of this system was sort of me trying to make sense of inconsistencies with SAO. Um, I, I, if you look at SAO, there is a ton of equipment slots, and apparently people just don't use them all. Like, you know, you can obviously wear a hat, you can wear shoulder armor, you can wear full body armor, you can wear a belt, you can wear, like, you know, pants. Uh, shoes, whatever, and then there's subclasses. Obviously, there's lighter wep there's lighter equipment, there's heavy equipment. So there's got to be something that's never explained in the uh, the the anime or the light novels or any of that to explain why some people aren't using all the equipment or why people aren't just all in heavy armor. Obviously, the people who are in heavy armor should theoretically have an advantage. Um, Asuna makes a comment specifically about. Uh, she doesn't use a shield because it would slow down her attacks. Uh, which sort of explains some of that. But then there's the fact that the good majority of the characters apparently never wear headwear, which doesn't make sense because if you could just put on a hat and a hat adds like 50 armor, why wouldn't you? So obviously there has to be some sort of penalty related so the whole concept of stamina costing different amounts based on what you're wearing and trying to balance around that is sort of me trying to make sense of the weirdness of um, appearance versus effect you can balance it massively lowering the many ability though hmm would make sense somehow <laughs> Well, that's part of it. I mean, that is one of the finer things of looking at uh, skill interactivity and how different uh, types of skill lie together. Mm -hmm. Well, hiding it makes sense, except for that doesn't seem like something that was implemented in the game. Also, I don't know if anyone reads the wikis or looks into the history, but apparently Kirito is like the most broken character in the game because he's running around wearing armor and he doesn't have an armor skill slotted. So there's weird inconsistencies with the way the SAO game plays. Uh, body structures. Mm. I would like that, but... I don't think we're going to, and even if we did, I don't like the concept of um, stats related to them, although in a sense it would affect the gameplay because it does affect um, hitboxes, 
and that does have a big impact on how the system is currently implemented. So um, I believe for the time being, there will just be one base body type male, one base body type female. I tend to agree there, because as soon as you change the um, the hitbox region detection, it's always have a, having a great impact on how you actually perform with that character. And given it actually stat boosts, kind of like being fast or being slow or that kind of stuff, is really something that I'm not so convinced about, I think. But yeah. Anything else we wanted to bring up in this uh, stream today? I don't think so. Um. Well, let's see if anyone has any questions. I'll uh, give this a second since there is like a six second delay. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Safe no, stop, <laughs> stop, stop linking us pictures. We're not clicking on them. But he said, "Safe big." No, <laughs> I'm I'm not allowed to. Okay. No clicky. No. Okay. No. Yeah, I'm not allowed to do that. But yeah, how about changing the um? How about changing the body depending on the base stats? Hmm. 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 Hmm, I don't think it still goes into the hit detection and all of that, uh, all of that stuff that we don't really want to have to mess with if we can avoid it. I think. I tend to agree there with you. Uh, maybe in the future, maybe down the line, uh, that is definitely a uh, a balancing issue that we should probably avoid. <laughs> I can check them. That doesn't mean I'm going to. <laughs> Very well then. Um, I actually planned this stream to only take up thirty minutes. Minutes. Really? I was expecting like an hour, personally. You were expecting an hour, but you know, as I see it, our phone call is running for about three hours. Well, we just we talked for an hour beforehand, oh, and right. we ran about a half hour late so we've done about an hour and a half of stream for oh, 9,000 hours <laughs> um very well done um I think this is good for the first stream though exactly I think that's that's a format we can actually keep that way if, if we if we want to um the only thing I was asked to um show you guys before I end the stream is our very own Facebook page because several people requested it and now it is there everything we are going to post on IndieDB um, on yeah on our official IndieDB website will also be posted on the Facebook website everything that's going to post it on the community website will also be posted there but as you may have noticed the community website is currently offline it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be online by tomorrow that is the last thing I was um, told by the guy who's fixing it but uh, again I won't give you any promises because this shouldn't have happened in the first place but now it is happened and um, it really seems to be a serious issue so it may take another two days to actually fix it given that it is the weekend and nobody likes to work on the weekend and yet here we are working on the weekend well we are doing something for fun I guess eh. sure we'll go with that and these people do it do it for the money so that's, that's actually more of a reason to be wanting to do something if you get paid oh, well but you don't get paid for this job <laughs> <laughs> yes. So yeah, um, the forum will be online soon. We'll be back online soon. But uh, as I said, 
in the meanwhile, you might want to check out the, um, the Facebook page if there's anything new or if you want to discuss something there in the meantime. I mean, you're welcome to do so. So, yeah, that concludes um, our first stream, I guess. So, is there anything else, Jonathan? Uh, hopefully, this will be available for viewing on YouTube. We'll see if that uh, recorded properly. Yeah, that's something I'm worrying about, too. <laughs> <laughs> An hour and a half into the stream. Um, <laughs> I think... Uh, I think we've got everything covered. Uh, thanks, everybody, for coming out. Uh, if this isn't available on YouTube, then uh, then you got the the only seats in the house. So okay. enjoy that. And before we end this, I would like to apologize to every one of you for the technical difficulties we faced in the beginning. I'm really, really um, yeah, grateful that we actually managed to figure this out. Um, I hope that the next stream will start without any technical difficulties like we faced them this time but um, yeah trying to gain experience in streaming stuff and we, I never did this before but thank you for actually staying with us you're doing an awesome job and we will talk next time when Jonathan when is the next meeting we have not figured that out that we will let you know at least the week in advance uh, through the usual media so that will be through the indie db page uh, from now on the facebook page i guess um, the forms if they're up uh, jake's blog and uh, are we still doing twitter feeds updates have any any eye candy for the end um, oh geez i will show them something Although, technically, I shouldn't. <laughs> Do you have some, like, Cedric art that you can show? That we haven't... C Cedric art that we can show? No, he uploaded everything to NDDB. I cannot show them something they, they are already uh, I was about to show them something uh, right from the engine itself, but if we don't want to do that, that's fine with me. Hey, that's up to you. You're project lead, man. <laughs> that's your call entirely. Alright, everyone, I'm going to give you a very short glimpse at the occlusion cutting system, if that's alright with you. So... Why is the game still there? Oh, jeez. Because we never... <laughs> we, we never exited. We we've never just been, exited? We've just been sitting in the lobby for uh, about 40 minutes. Oh, jeez. Exit. There you go. So, ba -ba 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 -ba, where is Unity? I don't know. <sighs> Getting tired over there? No, it's just, you know, usually it starts up in about two seconds, and for some reason. Probably slow. because we're running a stream or something. I don't know. I, we've already established that computers hit you for some reason, so that's probably the most likely reason. So, da, 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 da. so yeah, I'm just going to show you something coding-wise, and it's not really related to graphics. So. Did I already load the scene? No, it's still loading the scene. All right. So how am I gonna do this? I'm gonna just make some blanks here. Zoom out for a bit. So can you guys see that in the in the stream view? Because I'm currently not. It's a couple seeing. seconds behind, but uh, I can. I'm looking at the stream now, I do see stuff. You do see stuff. Okay, so what I'm having here right now is hopefully it will work that way. Um Yeah. So on the left side we have the game view. On the right side we have the oh she is the music is turning in. So 
On the left side, the game view. On the right side, the scene view. And what you see right now is that we programmed it that way that um, every object that's not rendered in your, ga in your game view is not being rendered at all in the memory. So whenever I'm turning the camera, it's going to render what needs to be rendered. And this kind of helps us to keep the frame rate where it should be. Right now we limited it at 60 frames per second. And please bear in mind that this is currently running on a low end testing card. So um, you shouldn't expect too many frame drops at all. And when I'm moving around, it's going to change it to whatever needs to be rendered. Dip, dip, dip. The other lines that you may see here right now, the red lines, the black lines, are pathfinding generated lines. So these are the lines, the ways that NPCs are currently calculating for themselves to move uh, around objects. And even with the occlusion calling system in place so that those objects are actually not rendered in, in, in memory, they still avoid them because then they've been giving the exact location of each object in the game world. So yeah, as you can see right now when I'm in this section of the town, nothing of the entire town gets rendered except for this little section here. And this actually allows us to have a very large scene with a very big city, with a dense city, with lots of details, without having to worry that much about system relocation and that kind of stuff. So this is already doing a lot of efficiency for us. So yeah, that's all the eye candy I can give you for tonight. Someone asked about the grass. I don't think we changed the shaders on those. Somebody asked about the... No, we did not. I did not pay that much attention to the grass yet. I'm gonna tell you that I'm already working on a new shader system for the uh, terrain, the grass and that kind of stuff, but this is not really that high on my priority list. Right now I'm really trying to focus on the network coding so that everything gets synchronized well and that the features we actually wanted to get working are working. Yeah. So that's all I can give you for tonight and I think that's it for today. So whenever we will have the next stream oh. Right. We were going to take suggestions from people for games. If we're going to do the game thing, uh, it'd be nice if in the future we could have multiplayer games that people can join us in, in playing. So if you have some suggestions, uh, ideally, you know, low, low concentration games so that Jake can uh, talk and play and we can answer people's questions. But it'd be nice if we have something that uh, we can get you guys in on playing. Yeah, I, I admit it. Uh, Jonathan is um, totally right. I'm very bad at multitasking. I um, we leave that up to other people. I just can't focus on too many things at the same time. I'm sorry. So low concentration games or or just a plain image like you see it right here is all I can deal with. <laughs> um, when the forms go back up, I will probably make a thread or something, maybe uh, either thread or a category um, for people to come up with suggestions. Um, ideally, uh, no MMOs. Uh, obviously, we don't want anything where we need people to have subscriptions. Uh, it, it seems nice, but not everyone plays MMOs, and uh, I'm, I'm sure a lot of our developers don't have the time or the money. Um, any multiplayer game is fair game to suggest but obviously uh, we're not all going to have it. But uh, in the future, we do hope to rotate uh, who's talking and who's showing up. So we might be able to uh, cover some different games. Um, I believe... Hmm. Yeah. Um... Uh, let's see. So if we were going to do the Naruto game, for example. Um... Ultimate Shippuden. Um, that's actually kind of a, a fun little game because since it's one-on-one uh, -on -one fighting, uh, it does allow us to do things like you know have one person talking while one other person's fighting. Um, ideally, that should be playable in the future. So if any of you have uh, Naruto Ultimate Ninja Storm 3 for the PC, 
uh, we might be able to get some matches in on that. Uh, they are having some network code problems, which uh, which is a good representation of their uh, wonderful uh, network coding. <laughs> <laughs> um, but things like that, so things where we can get away with maybe having somebody not playing. So and any any lobby based games are good. Um, games where we might be able to pause. Um, Fighting games are kind of okay for that reason, although I don't know if uh, we have too many fighting game players. I think it's mostly just me, but um, RTSs are potentially okay, um, because if you're not playing against the AI, you can totally just stop, have everyone stop playing and just be talking or, you know, minding their own business or something. Uh, Shooters are... As we as we saw today, shooters are a little tough. Um, At, least a little little At least on me. At least on me. But yeah, that's that's that. We will leave that up to you. Warcraft three. So that's a good one. Oh, I haven't played Warcraft three in a long time. I'm pretty good at that. Um, <laughs> it, it, like I said, just make suggestions. Anything is a uh, is a fair game suggestion. Um, when the forms are up again, I'll try to get a thread up. Um, I, I might do a category for specifically for streaming, but we'll see. Uh, ideally, it should be up tomorrow. If not, uh, by Monday, Jake? I will try my best to get this form working uh, without me working on it. Yeah, so I cannot promise, but Monday, the day shall be it. So yeah, I think that concludes, finally, this first stream we had, hopefully. And thanks again for everyone who joined us today, and thank you for actually joining our project and yeah, staying with us, being part of our community. Um, a warm thank you to everyone who actually visits our community regularly and contributes to it. I'm really happy about that. Um, we will talk again in in a few weeks hopefully and um, for some of you who asked why we don't post that many updates when we don't post updates it means we are working on stuff and when we post updates it means we are not working on stuff so whenever we don't post updates it's actually a good sign that's all I had to say about that so everyone um, Jonathan, do you have any conclusion words? Something like something epic? Because I don't I'm not that good at 